Ciao friends! In this unplugged video, I want to share how we answer to a question we received about the basket analysis DAX pattern. We will see the question and how we try to modify the formula, hopefully providing a good result. So this is the um, in, in this in this web page we have the basket analysis DAX pattern that basically allowed the user to choose two products or two categories of products and see how many orders contain that product uh, in, in the same order. Now, the formula that we usually consume in this, in this, um, um, in this pattern is the number of, board, number of orders that have both the, uh, the products or both the categories of products. And the question is, can I get, instead of this amount, this, instead of the number of orders, can I get the, the sales amount, the amount of sales that have both orders? And as we will see, the problem is that understanding the question, to be honest, but let's open the file that is the optimized version of the pattern. So if you want to know more about the pattern, just read the article. And let's take a look at the measure we want to change. So the measure we have is this measure that has both the orders. So this is the measure that we have. Order both has both the orders. And we can ignore the technique that we use at the beginning because basically this technique has the only role of getting a list of order numbers that contain both the products that the user selected. And the calculate statement simply retrieve, simply apply in the filter context the list of the orders without modifying any other filter context and evaluating the number of orders that we have in this measure. Now, the number of orders is just uh, uh, a technique that is more optimized to get the number of uh, unique orders we have in the sales table. So it's like a distinct count, it's just written with this technique for, op for uh, a performance reason. So how can I retrieve the number? So let's, try, let's start by copying this measure into a new measure. So I create a new measure. I just do a copy and paste. I copy this measure into sales amount both and i will just change this measure so <clears throat> i want to use a sales amount because the obvious way to solve the problem is that this is a pattern you just uh, change you just replace the sales amount measure and it should work so let's try to confirm this uh, let's uh, use a decimal number with two decimals and uh, thousand separator and then we can include the sales amount in the in the visual. So we do this, we move the sales amount at the beginning, and we try to think about what uh, what we are doing. So there is a number. Uh, the number to me looks good, but the problem is probably what is the meaning of this number? Because what we have here is that in, in this cell, so let me highlight the cell. So for example, let's consider this cell. So this cell is showing the amount of sales for this product but only considering the orders that also have this other product selected so we we, we combine this mouse with fly simulator and the sales for fly simulator is 150, 151 um, so to me this is already good but probably if many people ask this question, it's because actually the question is a different one. Uh, the question is, we want to know what? We might want to know the amount of the sales of the entire orders, or the amount of the sales of this product and the other product. But we can do both, right? So let's try. Let's try to, to figure out how to modify the measure to answer to both queries. So the real problem here is understanding the question. Because, okay, if I don't want to get the sales amount, let's say that I want to get the value of the orders. Well, if I want to get the value of the orders, I just have to remove the filters from the product table. Because the product table is what's, what is filtering my, my, uh, my visual. So if, if I remove the filter from the product table and I click this, I keep this, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm missing a comma, and I can click this, 
and I can go back here and I should see the number here, which probably is not good because I didn't pay attention to is this product or this is this another another table? Let me check. Uh, let's see. We have category from uh, let's see this one product category and product product name. So we are removing this from uh, the calculate statement. We have the list of the orders. So it seems that the orders are the same. We have this amount in the same orders, but it's it seems strange, right? Because uh, if I have uh, these orders, it should be five. There should be five orders only. And so something is not working correctly. So let's see, let's take a look at the diagram view here. So we have the promotion. We have we removed the we removed the filter from the product table. So let's go back. Do, do, do. It's not working. Okay. So we have the product. We have the product customer. Oh, maybe that we we did some optimization. I have to check whether I am applying the filter over sales order number in the measure. So let's take a look because uh, the problem is that what is the filter contact at this point because. Uh, the, the final result is just the calculate of the measure sales amount. The measure sales amount only uses what we have in the in the filter context. We're not filtering any product. We are getting the orders within products, which is just a list of sales order numbers. So let's try to comment this one for a moment. So let's investigate. This seems strange to me, but if this, the orders are the same, then this makes sense. So let's try to concatenate X. Concatenate X, we want to concatenate X orders with and products, and I want to retrieve the sales order number. I want to see the list of orders I have in this combination. So this is a technique I use often, so I can just change the measure, uh, apply concatenate X and see what is the result for itself. Here, I think that this can help. Wow, I see too many too many orders, too many orders. So the problem is that we have many more orders than what we have seen here. So let's take a look at the order bot. Uh, order bot uh, calculation was, uh, so this one orders, number of orders is a sum X a summarize uh, this one. So this is quite strange. I mean, the, the list of the orders is always the same regardless of the combination. Uh, maybe that, the, but yeah, but I'm changing, I'm removing the filter. So let's go back here. Uh, so the keep filter is not a problem because I don't remove any other filter. Okay, sorry, no, this is the, this is the, 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 the right formula. So let's go to the sales amount here. So we just concatenate X this list, and the list doesn't have the product. Oh, right, 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 right. Ah, this is my fault. I forgot that in order to retrieve this list, uh, we use the, an extended list, and then we combine with a key filter. So the key filter should have worked by using the current product because this was the optimized version this was confusing me too so yeah because we made some optimization so in this case probably we have to slow down the performance a little bit so let's start to get the correct list so let's say that the correct orders orders list is equal to calculate table calculate table probably i could do this by changing something before i want to retrieve the list of so the I want to retrieve the values of sales order of sales order number where I filter the key filters of this and I keep the existing filter. So basically this will correspond to what we had before. So this way, if I use this, the list would be much shorter because now, I'm simulating what we had before in the calculation of the uh, order both that didn't have the remove filter, I just, it just had this one. So I have this one, I, I retrieve the list of the orders that is filtered by the current selection of the, of the product selected. So let's move forward and let's see if this simplifies the calculation. And it works. So you see that in this case, we have 720 
orders that have this keyboard and the mouse. And in this case, we have a much smaller list. In this case, we have only one, two, three orders. Makes sense, it works. So now we can go here and we can basically, basically we can retrieve the same calculation. So one thing I could do in order to preserve the performance could be, okay, I just have to retrieve this list and then I can apply this list there. So, okay, we can try this. I mean, in terms of performance is not optimized, oops, but it should be good enough. So let's try to indent the code the right way. I can remove my concatenate text. I can remove the code here and I can use this list here. So this the list now is, uh, is different for every self. In performance standpoint is not good. Let's try, let's try the measure and then let's check if we can optimize the performance. So now, what is this number now? This number is the amount of sales for the orders regardless of the products that we have in the orders. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it works this way. I'm pretty confident this number corresponds to this request. I'm not sure that this is the, the, the request made in the question, but let's say that this is, let's rename this measure. So let's call this measure. Let's go here. It's visible, yes. Uh, I can go here and I can, come on. Oh, the mouse. Yeah, nothing. Today I'm not able to enlarge this. Okay, I can rename this measure and I can use here uh, sales uh, orders uh, complete. Okay, uh, both. Just to identify this measure the right way. Now, uh, let's try to check whether I can optimize this measure because basically what I want to do, I want to include only these orders. This technique was, the, the technique that was using the orders with products here was reducing the number of different calculation of the filter for different cells in the report. And it was just an optimization to, to get the right result. Now, if I keep the number here, the problem is that I want to retrieve the orders that have the product that is in current selection. Now I have to, I have to keep something like that and probably I can, well, potentially, potentially it could be, hmm, I'm not sure. We can try this, we can try this. So we can try this, but I'm not sure this could work because if I retrieve the current fit, in the current filter content, the order number, which is what I did here, and then apply this list that this should be faster and is not considering the removal of the filter. This should work because this the, the values is not affected by the remove filter. And the key filter will keep also the filter we applied here. So to be honest, this could be useless at this point. Okay, let me try. I'm not sure this worked, but let's try. But in terms of analyzing the performance, this would be a completely different job. So, okay, the, the result is the same. So I'm confident that this could work and it is better than this one. Actually, it's very similar. And so let's try again and let's see the result. And the numbers are still the same. So it's pretty good. So basically what I'm doing, I added here, this values uh, uh, retrieves the value of the order number for the product I'm currently filtering. At the same time, I'm removing the filter from the product table so that I only keep the orders for the current selection based on the current filter context in every cell. So for example, if I have, a, let me explain, for this cell, oops, for this cell, this one, I'm getting the list of the orders for this product and I am applying this filter context to this calculation, removing the filter from the product itself because I want this number, I want the 308 to be the sum of all the products of those uh, orders including not only Fly Simulator, but also the Contoso optical mouse, which could be the next step. So this, if this is the measure I wanted to create, let's assume that this is the, the measure that is correct for this calculation. The problem could be that, whoops, sorry, I made a mistake. So let me, I want to copy this measure. And now I create a new measure, new measure, which is the sales, uh, 
products, sales or the, the sales uh, combine products. Okay, so let's get only the value of the orders, but only including the products that we selected. How can we do that? Well, we have to do something pretty similar. In this case, we could keep the product. Well, actually, we have to create a list of two products. So what we can do is a union of, uh, oh, maybe that is better if we create a variable for that. So let's uh, create a variable which has a products uh, combine, which is equal to a union. And the union could be the union of the uh, values of the products uh, product key. So I just get the product key of the product. So if I have a category, I have everything here. And then I combine this with the values of the other table product and product product key. So if I combine these two and I use this here, I think I get a smaller value. So let's take a look before I click enter. We have 88,6113. This number should be smaller. Once I confirm this, well, not much. Oh, well, I have to include the, the new measure. So let's include the new measure here. And let's move this measure at the beginning so it's easier to compare. So the second column is the new calculation, but it's not working. Now, the problem is that I don't know if it is right or wrong because uh, we should get the value of the orders. Uh, if these orders have only two products, we are in trouble. It seems unlikely to me. So let's see. Let's see if I can change something in the measure to validate this one. So now we are getting the products combined, which is one and two. This is combined using the current filter context. So it makes sense. We remove the filter from the product table because we wanted to remove any filter existing and we replace the filter with this other filter, which makes sense. We only filter the order numbers and they are in the current filter contest and the orders that are in both. So this keep the optimization. So I would say that it's, uh, it's unlikely, but let's try to change some of these uh, uh, category. So if I remove this, uh, so let's uh, can I change this one? So if I remove this calculation, or let's move to another. Uh, yeah, I can I can try to clear this selection. The numbers are the same, and the numbers are the same. No, I think that this is not working as expected. So once again, I have to. So let's go back to the previous selection, and let's try to. Oh, I lost the this combined products that should be at the beginning. And let's try to review whether we are actually combining only two products, because at this point, my doubt is that we are getting too many products here. So let's try to test. So our test equal to concatenate x of the products combined with the product key. Oh, maybe a stupid thing, sorry. The, the problem is, 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 is different. The problem is that I'm combining two different columns with different lineage. So what I have to do is a treat as of the result of this union, and I have to apply the filter to the column product product key, because a union doesn't keep the data lineage if you have two different Data lineage. I forgot that the data lineage must be the product product key. So this one, it should work. So let's see now what happens. And I expect just a smaller number. Here we go. Here we go. It works. So you see that now, for example, in this case, we are counting. We have a higher number for this measure because we are considering also other products in the same orders. Whereas in this Second measure, we are we are getting a smaller number because we have only we are only considering the two products that we are combining in this end definition. So yes, it it should work. So uh, this is a uh, this is how I explored how to solve the problem. And as you have seen, the biggest issue was to understand the question. 
And then the second issue is that I had to figure out what I want to actually put in the filter context. And I, and I lost time when I didn't see the content of the filter context. I should have, uh, I should, I could have spent a lower amount of time if I tried to first debug the filter context using the concatenate hex for the new filters I applied, checking that I was obtaining what I was expecting. And only at that point, moving forward, I would have probably saved the maybe 30, 40% of the time during this demo. I hope you enjoyed this unplugged video and enjoy DAX. Mm -hmm.